Taxi drivers, what's the deepest secrets you've overheard in your car? An 18-year-old lad, regular customer, was stressing over his exam result and told me seriously if he'd failed that his life was over and he would commit suicide. He was completely serious. Apparently, his parents had been putting string pressure on him. I brought him home and called his father out of the house. By this time, the poor lad was in tears. I said to him that he should tell his dad what he'd told me. By this time, the father was distraught. I let them both talk for a bit right there. And then the father got him out of the car and brought him inside. The update was that he told his parents the whole story. They were horrified and got him into therapy. I've no idea whether he passed the exams or not, but I do know he was all right afterward. I was very shook up about it. The situation could do easily have gone wrong, and I take no credit at all. Story 2. I carried two medical professionals once, and one of them talked to his colleague about that time he was kindly kidnapped out of the hospital by two guys that took him to a mansion outside the city and asked to examine the heart condition condition of a man who seemed to be a local mafia boss that was wanted from the law. They somehow provided him with all the tools and help and made him operate the boss. They finally let him go and paid him with a big sum of cash saying they would contact him again for anything else. He said it was of the scariest yet most interesting experiences in his life. And people who work in hospitals apparently have some mad orgies off duty. Story 3 I work Uber Black in Los Angeles. Picked up a customer round midnight from a flight from Mexico to LAC. First stop. He waited for some compadres who loaded five duffel bags in my SUV. Second stop was from LA to San Jose. 6 AR drive. After $2,500 fare and $400 tip, I never dared ask what was in those bags. Story 4. My uncle was a cab driver in LA. One day he picks up two guys who then discuss a murder they are going to commit. After a while, they begin discussing whether they should also kill the cab driver because he heard them talking about the plan and could identify them. They eventually decided not to, but that was the day my uncle decided to stop being a cab driver. Story 5. That he was cheating on his wife with his Cicoain dealer, who came from the same country as I did, which is how the conversation got started, and it had been going on for 25 years. I don't know what impresses me more, a 25-year affair or a 25-year CCAIN habit. Edit. To clarify, since a lot of you are speculating, the dealer was a woman, quite good in bed too, from his detailed description. It was my first fare of the night, the first time working there as a cab driver. I was helping out a friend of my dad's who owned a bar deep in Ontario, CA by driving his regulars home. Fun times, lot of fights, incredible amounts of shenanigans between the patrons, and incredibly loud corridos blasting from the speakers all throughout the night. Story 6. Order. Destination address. By city. Submission location by navigator. A girl drove up, sat down, said, There is no need to go anywhere. We need to charge the phone. We sat for 15 minutes, talked, recharged the phone, looked at the charging percentage, said, Well, that's enough. Gave $50 and left. Story 7. When my dad was driving a taxi in the 80s, he said he picked up meatloaf with a giant stuffed alligator at a bar. While stopped at a light meatloaf, offered him sea cane from a hidden pouch in the alligator that was also stuffed with more sea cane and cash. Story 8. There was a lady I picked up at like 4 a.m. and she was obviously desperately seeking something. The trip was over an hour and a half away and I could tell she was hurting physically. Sniffles and cringing that were synonymous with opioid withdrawals. She was quiet the first 45 min, but texting often. A phone call occurred where she was arguing with someone who didn't want her to go to this destination. She kept saying she would be fine. I asked out of concern if she was okay and she spilled the beans. The call was from her girlfriend, who didn't want her to go to this house in a fancy area to meet up with some dudes who wanted her to come over to hang out in exchange for pills. Her GF was convinced she was going to be raped. I told her that I'd been in a similar situation with pills when I was younger and that cannabis helped and that in a few more days she would be free of the whole thing. She cried and cried. I had an old cannabis vape deep in my car that I donated to the cause. It worked and she chilled out and let her know if she cancelled. I would return her to her pickup location since I had to go back to that area anyway. She cancelled the trip. She slept the whole way back. I hope she made it out of that addiction. Those places really feel hopeless when you don't know how to get out. Story 9. 
When a girl told me she taunted her gay longtime friend to try out having straight sex with her just to find out the difference as she herself is bisexual, the guy finally gave in and liked it. They did so one more time, and that's it. Sad part is that she just found out the guy is now going out with her best friend and is now swearing to be straight. She regrets having converted him to straight and now doesn't know whether she's jealous of them or truly in love with him. Asked for my advice on how to break them up without being judged. Story 10. Used to drive for Uber, and I can't tell you all the dumb shit I heard from idiot 20-somethings. One made a sea cane deal over the phone while I drove him around. He said the dealer's name over the phone multiple times, and I knew where he was going to get it. These two teenagers I picked up one Halloween night were fleeing their own house. Well, their parents' house, because their friend had just gotten stabbed there. And all the shit people say and do while ridiculously drunk on a major holiday like New Year's Eve is just jaw-dropping. Eventually, I just stopped driving nights and most of that shit went away, but it's really incredible how people in cabs and Ubers just forget that their driver can see and hear everything they say. Story 11 Former Uber driver picked up a very well-dressed lady from one side of town, heading to a very rich neighborhood on the other side of town. During the ride, she made a series of calls, and it became clear she was a call girl with quite a few customers. It also became clear I was delivering her to her biggest client, an accident and injury attorney known for extremely extensive advertising in my local area. Anybody around here would know his name, and he was supposed to be married and the whole family man type. My passenger indicated otherwise. His house was a very nice mansion. Law must pay well. Story 12. I've heard... There was an old Vietnamese man that goes into my car and he told me about his life. He told how he got drafted into the Viet Cong just as the war ended so he didn't see any combat. He told me sometimes in life you get lucky and other times you don't. I dropped him off at a cancer center. Edit. This took place in San Diego, California, if I'm not mistaken. Story 13, Uber driver, but a few discussions about terminal illness, their own or a friend or relatives. Two different women had been sexually assaulted prior to getting in and had quite emotional discussions about it. A couple of musings on life conversations that kinda twigged my suicide detecting spidey senses. But who knows? Also one passenger mused on an abusive upbringing. We went on a somewhat disappointing date after actually. Story 14. I've worked for Uber, and once a passenger, a clearly intoxicated lady, told me she should have married her brother-in-law, cause her husband had a tiny dick and was much less handsome, but because the husband was also far richer, she married him. I hope she doesn't remember she told me that. She's probably mortified to this day if she does. Story 15. Disabled person, so get a lot of taxis. Some regulars into work. Got close. One driver told me to keep secret that he was dying with cancer, kept blacking out with the pain and meds, and half convinced he should get it over with and swerve into oncoming traffic. He was very erratic in his driving and looked pretty ill. Nice guy, though, so didn't snitch, and he regularly drove me. I was young and therefore immortal. Story 16. Once drove three teenage girls. At the end of the trip, I knew everything about their friend's sexual life. Who had slept with who, with or without condom, who had infected who with chlamydia, and so on ad nauseum. Edit. And my most upvoted comment ever is about teenage sex. Oh well. Story 17. That he secretly hated all white people because they were all secretly Trump-loving mega-Nazis bent on destroying the world through some sort of capitalistic control thing that I can't even begin to remember because it was so damn outlandish. Did I just kind of tuned him out? This was for a 14-minute ride. We are both white. Story 18. Uber driver. I pick a dude up from a strip club. A well-known local celebrity. His drop-off is an affluent neighborhood in the foothills. As I pull into the driveway, a half-naked middle-aged woman in lingerie is standing by the garage. He says, this is close enough, so I stop about 20 yards from the woman. She cracks a whip and points to the ground at her feet. This dude gets out and on hands and knees in his Armani suit starts crawling toward her. She cracks the whip again and points at me. You're next. Edit, I was not next. I am married. Story 19. I used to drive for Uber for about a year. Never had any crazy secrets. The craziest ride I had was after this kid who in his late teens and needed a ride on Thanksgiving evening after he got beat up by his dad and brother. His dad came out of the house and stood in front of the car. I backed out of there with the kid and took him an hour. 
hour and a half away from there to his GF's house. I felt bad for the kid. Apparently, he was trying to reconnect with his estranged family, and it apparently didn't work out. I'm just glad I could get him to a safe place. Other than that, the main things I dealt with were a lot of drunk people leaving bars. I worked a late shift on weekends when people were out partying. I saw so many bachelor and bachelorette party. I would get offers to come smoke weed, do lines, go watch strippers at bachelor parties, offers of booze, flirting, etc. Never took up any of those offers as I was out there in a professional setting to make money. I did enjoy hearing about people's lives and talking to them for a while, and it made me feel good that I could provide a safe ride for people and help to keep some drunk drivers off the road. Story 20. A woman who was pregnant with twins, and also a heroin addict. She always got a ride to what I assume was her dealer's house. She offered me one if her unborn babies, but I could only have one because she already traded one for dra eggs. People unload on cab drivers all the time, but this one stuck with me. Story 21. Flip side of the coin. Uber driver once told me, and my, so that she had been the victim of satanic ritual abuse as a child. She was nice enough, but clearly a little unbalanced and either looking for attention or a legitimate product of all satanic panic nonsense back in the day. Story 22. Used to drive for Uber. Would chill at my condo. Wait for a ride to ding. Pick up. One ding I got was really close. A pickup scheduled from my own complex. I pop down, turn on the car, pull it out. My neighbor walks down, girl in her twenties. She's with her friend, and spent a significant portion of the ride talking about how she's cheating on her boyfriend. Story 23. I own a taxi company in Sweden, but only work on the weekends because I've got job at a factory as a diesel mechanic. One night as I parked into a gas station to get some Red Bull, these two older men approached me, both lurly drunk. They wanted to go home, and it was a bit off in the woods, which in my mind is a lot of money. So I got my Red Bull and put them into my car, and one of the drunk old guys starts talking to the other, come to my house, let's have a beer, and the other guy just smiles in a friendly manner. I was hoping for two destinations, as that means more money. So when we got there, the guy insisted his presumably newly found friend to come in for a drink. He kindly declined and told me to drive to his house. Just before I started to drive away, the other guy shows up and hands him an unopened can of beer for the road. I'm like, okay, he's already drunk of what more damage could a beer make? I hit his address on my GPS. Great 20 calabers more to drive. Good money for me. We drove on really dark roads with basically no light. Just me and this drunk guy. I don't know what happened, but it seemed like he had some sorts of flashbacks to when he worked as a helicopter mechanic for the army in the Middle East in the 90s. He was a big guy, tough attitude, and really just a hard to knock down man. Those old school type of people. He started hallucinating and became very scared of the night because his flashbacks were haunting him. Supposedly, he was kidnapped and tortured. He saw a lot of his fellow friends in the army get killed in front of him. Then he stood still for a second, told me that he took the life of a man in his team being forced by the enemies. He started to cry out like a little baby. He never told anyone, never got sentenced, and the remaining two men who still were alive didn't say a word. They met up that evening and got shit-faced. This was the memorial day for the killings. I just happened to be the driver that night. Now imagine being alone with a killer in the middle of the night, in the middle of nowhere. Story 24. Used to Uber on the side, here in Ottawa. Honestly, one could surveil both business and government here while driving an Uber if they wanted to. You could run three drivers and get intelligence about just a ton of things happening night and day. I definitely heard a ton of things, but the one that got me was about businesses closing and firing every one of its 200 employees months before it happened. It sucked for me when that one hit the news. I was there when they made the decision. Sweet things happened too. A woman had a fun dinner with her best friend and got in the passenger side first and said to me, Watch this. I just found out I'm pregnant today. Going home to tell my husband, but she's going to me the first to know. After me. Oh my god. That's right. You're the first I've told. I'm totally freaking out right now. It's cool. No big deal. Anyway, five men later, they're joking about it with me, and she asks me my name. I tell her, and she's like, it was between that and Andrew for the middle name. This is a sign. It has to me. My name. What if it's a girl? She'll be a badass with a male middle name like Michael Burnham. Coolest, sweetest conversation of my life.
Story 25. He basically showed me the apartment where his wife was cheating on him in, and that it was with a black guy, then proceeded to explain how he was going to kill her with a gun, a 44 Magnum pistol to be precise, and then asked me if I know what .44 pistol does to a woman's face, and then that I should see what it does to a woman's pussy. He told me that he knew that I must think that he was really sick and started laughing. Story 26. Pre-Uber. Working for a limo service. Pick up this woman from the hotel to drive to airport. She literally doesn't say a word to me the whole time, which is fine, but didn't even acknowledge me at any point, just talking biz on the phone the whole time. I can't help but overhear that her company represented avocado growers, and she had been in town to listen to two advertising pitches. One wanted to do radio spots using the zombies' time of the season. The other agency wanted to do actual ads on TV. She made it clear on the phone that her company was going with the second agency, who wanted to do TV. So I drop her off at the airport. Never acknowledges me. Fair tip were prepaid. I admit I'm thinking what a bitch to a certain extent as I head back to the same hotel for another airport run. This time it's two business guys getting in. Very friendly asking me questions. Turns out they work for an ad agency that had just pitched avocado ads. Radio ads, in fact, using the zombies' time of the season, LOL. They were very optimistic about their chances. Oh yeah, I say. That's funny, because I just drove the person you guys pitched to to the airport. Really? They say. Did she indicate one way or another which way they were gonna go? Listen, guys, I say. I hate to break it to you, but you didn't get the job. Shit got very quiet. And of course, later, they called her to complain. Bitch. Whatever. And it somehow came out that the limo driver was the same for both rides, and it was me that spilled the beans. She was irate. Luckily, my friend owned the company, and when she called adamant that I be fired, he just humored her. Not the most discreet moment of my life, lol. Story 27. I got a lift to take me to the hospital where my best friend was dying because I was too distraught to drive. Driver didn't accept my request that I really wasn't up for small talk, so I basically answered everything he asked with, I don't know, I just found out my best friend is dying and can't really think about anything else. We were almost to our destination when the driver pulled into the wrong lane against oncoming traffic. I screamed a lot, miraculously. We didn't get into a collision. It took six months for Lyft to refund my fare. Story 28. How many people do you enslave today? One man asked. Too many. Edit. Thanks for all the likes, guys. I really appreciate it. This inspired a really dark conversation. If this wasn't the best source of karma I have on this site, I'd probably delete this comment. LOL. Story 29. I was a taxi driver for about three months and I loved it. I was both these people's driver and their temporary therapist. I got told so many things and I handed out so much wisdom. I feel like I changed a lot of people's lives during that time. Story 30. Two guys talking freely about their scam op and going into the specifics of how to get the most out of it. The scam has something to do with cars and I can't remember what it was. I just remember them saying that it got them around 20 Yatsmailowoto. Story 31. As a guy Uber driver, I picked up a mid-twenties guy who was buzzing pretty good. During the convo to his house, he reveals he and his wife are swingers. I had a million questions about the lifestyle, like where, who, and how do you connect? He shared that there were a few websites, but after meeting many in the lifestyle, they have created a few Facebook groups for easier communication. I dropped him off at his house about 20 miles in the country. He got out and said, You are cool, man. If my wife were home, I would let you take a run at her. I chuckled and drive away. After picking up my next passenger, she informed me that a phone was left on the seat. Knowing that it was the swinger dude's phone, I was curious. Very curious. After dropping the lady off, I looked at the phone and realized it was unlocked and the Facebook app had a notification. I had to look. Sure enough, there is a gal flashing her boobs and asking the group, Anybody going to Bon Jovi tonight and want to hook up after? I laughed and finished the night giving people a few rides to the Bon Jovi concert, wondering if they were part of the group. Later, the phone rang and the swinger guy and I made arrangements to meet to pick up his phone the next day. I lived 20 miles in the country on the other side of the city, so it was a pain in the ass to meet up with him. He gave me an address. We met. 
His wife was with and thanked me in a wonderful way. Story 32. My friend got an Uber one day and the driver was talking about selling weed on the phone. When he hung up, my friend asked about prices, got his number and bought some weed from him. A few days later, he got the exact same driver, who obviously didn't remember him because he did the whole spiel again. My friend was like, dude, we just did this a few days ago. I bought some weed from you. Story 33. Not so great. I wasn't a full-time Uber driver either, just on my way to work. 1.5 HR drive. And it'd pay for gas LOL. Usually dropping people off at the airport and picking them up. 99% of the time. Anyway, last time I did it, I left the other city late, and I picked up a few girls that were already drunk. Eventually, their conversation gets to the point where all three of them supposedly had another friend steal their boyfriend away at some point in their lives. They were young, so maybe this started in high school? So they all devote everything they have to stealing her boyfriends now, as revenge. And they were telling stories of the ways they steal her men. Dirty women. Disgusting. The men didn't even have a chance. One girl kept saying, they never say no, they never say no. I didn't stop Uber because of that. Those girls were rude as hell, but I quit the other job that was far away and I didn't need the company or extra cash. Edit. Sorry if you want better stories. Ask a tattoo artist. I never hear people ramble on about nastier stuff than when they're trying to distract their friend's family from the pain of the needle. Story 34. You know I had so many jobs. I was a dishwasher, waiter, and cook. Laborer and bricklayer, mechanics assistant, a typical handyman. But now I want to tell you about when I was a taxi driver. One day, a young man approached me and said, Hey driver, step on the gas. So long without seeing her. I can't take it anymore. Pull over, please. I'm going to buy flowers for my love. And I went driving at his command, and him singing, whistling with his flowers. As soon as we arrived at the address, he told me to wait for him and ran in to look for her. After a few minutes, that lion that I was carrying as a passenger came back, turned into the smallest mouse. And he told me, Hey driver, go again. I made a mistake. This isn't the street. Tell me where. Far from here. Go without asking. And I went driving, him crying with his flowers. I continued driving, and he was throwing away pretty flowers. Story 35. I picked up a regular fare. A blind couple. They didn't live together. He lived about three miles further on, so I'd pick them both and their dogs up from town, then drop her at home and take him on. This one day, her daughter is with them. When we arrive at her house, I hop out and get the door. As I'm helping her out, he holds back and shares a little embrace with her daughter, kissing and whispering to each other. Daughter gets out the cab. Her mother kind of looks like she knows what is happening, and I jump back in and take this guy home. I didn't say a word. I was in disbelief. This guy wasn't exactly a looker. He was overweight, poorly dressed, smelt funny, and was fucking blind. Yet he was getting twice as much pussy as I was. Completely in shock. Edit. Essentially, the only difference between me and him was, he was blind. That's countered by the fact he has a cute Labrador, so maybe I need to get a dog. Then I can get the pussy. Story 36. I worked for a rental car agency and would pick customers up or drop them off from home to shop. Anyways, one lady had just had her son murdered the day before. She lived in a rougher part of town, and I think it was a gang shooting, if I remember correctly. The victim was a student, not a thug. The poor lady was just trying to keep it together and get through her daily obligations. Story 37. I got in a taxi around 15 years ago with my best mate, and we were so drunk. We were having a laugh with the driver and told him like so many secrets. Who we were dating, mischief we'd got up to in clubs, stuff we did at work. Well, you get the drill. Nothing bad, just silly 18-year-old. The driver was so chatty and kept encouraging us. When we went to pay and get out, B was like, Do you know so-and-so? Eh, yeah, we did. We worked with this woman, and it turned out it was his sister. He told her everything. We were mortified, and I never told a taxi driver another secret again. Story 38. Not an Uber driver, but was a passenger. Me and my friends were in Vegas. We got an old Asian man as our driver. 
he surprised us all by speaking Hindi, which is a language mostly spoken in India. He then went to tell us how his grandparents moved to India in during the British era and ran a very successful construction business in New Delhi. He even met Mahatma Gandhi once, apparently. Once the British rule ended, they had to leave everything behind and flee back to China. He somehow made his way back to the USA and lived in Vegas for the past 20 years. Now in Vegas, he apparently acted in a few movies and played the role of some Asian mafia boss in a couple of the Bourne series movies. He told us he is friends with Matt Damon and even showed us pics with many celebrities and YouTube videos of him acting in movies. Interesting ride from our hotel to the Vegas I Ferris wheel. Story 39. I gave a ride to two women who spent the whole ride debating whether or not the man whose house I had just picked them up from had killed their friend who had died in his kitchen earlier that same day. The alleged victim was a woman in her early 40s who lived with the man and had, according to his report, dropped dead quite unexpectedly after an afternoon of yard work and bike riding. Her best friends weren't having it. Story 40. I do this backwards. When I need to know secrets, I keep taking cabs and asking the driver. Usually takes about a day. Usually I'm asking about the sale price of plots of land or houses in different parts of a city. I'm not some real estate tycoon or anything, just someone trying to afford to build a home. This is in Southeast Asia. Where I live, real estate markets are pretty opaque and hard to gather info on. But real estate agents take a lot of cabs and speak freely around the driver. Sometimes I found someone with enough verifiable info and hired them for a couple of weeks. 